Hey folks, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. I am out in the garage about to work on the cabriolet. And what I'm going to show you guys today is breaking up the sound deadener on the floorboard right down here with uh, dry ice. Now, the rest of the car I've used just a heat gun and a scraper. And that worked really, really well. I'm a big fan of doing it that way. But I've heard dry ice works really good too. And uh, let's face it, it doesn't take much to convince me to play with some dry ice, so I figured I'd give it a shot and shoot a video for you. Um, if you notice, we just lost the light. <laughs> Let me go uh, turn the garage light back on. Hang on. There we go. Alright, we have light again. Sorry about that. I could edit that out, but I probably won't. Alright, so back to the dry ice. A um, couple things before I get started. Be really careful with dry ice. If you are not wearing gloves and handling this, you would burn your hand. Um, as awesome as it is, it's actually kind of on the dangerous side. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to let that sit on there for a minute. This is about 5 pounds total. I'm not going to use the whole thing, I guess. We'll see how it goes. But this cost me about six bucks. Not too bad. Put my glasses on and break this up a little bit. Notice I got these really thick leather gloves on. Um, if you guys are going to be doing it, doing this this way, make sure you protect your hands and your face if you're breaking it up. I was wearing safety glasses this time. So here we go. I got the dry ice on there. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes. And uh, what it's going to do is it's going to freeze this uh, sound dampener and hopefully make it super easy to remove. I've seen people just whack this stuff with a hammer and it looks like it breaks right up, but uh, we're about to find out. All right, well, it's been about 10 to 12 minutes so far and uh, I broke up the dry ice a little bit more into smaller pieces. Guys, I gotta be honest, I'm not sold on this idea. Um, I tried to bang some of the sound dampener loose with this wrench since I can't find my hammer. Uh, it's cool, it should work in theory. Um, I can tell you 100% truthfully that if I were doing this with a heat gun, it may not be spotless, but I would be done already. I would have all the sound dampener up in just a matter of a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit on here until it's all dissolved, all evaporated, I guess is the right word, and uh, come back and give it a few whacks with, with a hammer if I can find it. Otherwise, it'll be that wrench and, uh, and see where I'm at. But as of right now, uh, I'm going to say that's a no-go. I'm going to say that I think the heat gun method works better, even though if you look just to the back here, you can see it leaves that gummy residue. Um, don't mind my mess. I can clean that up really easy with just some bug and tar remover, whereas this, like I said, the amount of time I've let it sit, I would already have the sound dampener up and uh, be working on cleaning it and getting it getting it all nice and polished like I did on the other side. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give this another 15-20 minutes and see where we're at. Alright, another 20 minutes I think have gone by and uh, it, the sound dampener was no different than it was when I first started. So I thought I would just go ahead and take the opportunity to do what I like to do with dry ice and just play around with it and dump it in this giant cup of water. Uh, Overall, guys, I think the verdict is a no-go for me. Maybe if you let it sit on there till it was fully gone, it might, but it still seems like it would be a lot of work, whereas the heat gun was just heat up the, the dampener and scrape it right off. It, it's, it took maybe 10 minutes to do a panel the size of what you're looking at there. So I'm going to call the dry ice way... While maybe a good way to do it for someone, it's not really for me. I would just rather spend the 10 to 20 minutes scraping it and be done with it. So this has been Charles for HumbleMechanic.com. 
If you have any questions, go ahead and email me, charles at humblemechanic.com. Thanks for watching.